Praise the Holy. Very first. For thou, O Lord, art high. There it is. What is that? For thou, Scripture. No, that's, that's no, the same no. Time. We just did that one. <laughs> I like that one. What are, what are we drinking around here today? <laughs> we exalt thee, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, hey, let's go we're back to see you <laughs> <laughs> Y'all sing too high. <laughs> My mind blank. Help me out, Paula. I don't know what I'm trying to sing. We exalt you. We exalt you.
and we exalt Thee. Oh, we exalt Thee. Oh, we exalt Thee. Oh, some songs for us if you don't mind Mavis having her come to the keyboard uh, and Josh if you want to join her come on amen let's give him a hand you know they could almost be like mother and son uh, almost like that grab that acoustic Josh Should we sing one? Song? You want your all, so heed the call. He wants your all.
couple years ago but she wrote about a hundred songs uh, you might know like crossover crossover there's just one step ahead she just wrote a lot of songs so this is one more of hers um, I don't know what key to put it in I see God's hand parting the waters so that I might pass through I see God's hand songs that uh, came forth out of the uh, latter rain and the early sonship and early feast of tabernacles 
um, just have a certain sound yes. in them that that stirs my soul. Yes. Really does. Uh, Ladder Rain movement, for those of you that don't know, was in the 50s. And um, uh, 48, 49, 50, right around there. Little Quonset hut up in uh, Canada. Saskatchewan, was it? It's where that was? Battleford. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it went worldwide. It was a, it, it was a movement. And uh, people were told, it was a Bible college. The Houghton Brothers. And they had a publishing house there. And um, they were a part of the Assemblies of God, I believe, to begin with. And uh, the students started seeking God. They called a fast, and uh, the college uh, all started gathering and praying unto the Lord, waiting upon God. They felt something that God wanted to do something. And it was a prophetic time, so prophecy started coming forth out of the students and the staff and and uh, it was very sovereign and holy in that place. And uh, God started speaking to people to, uh, to go up there. They started hearing about something happening up in that area and uh, at the college. And uh, they believed in the impartation. And laying on of hands, and that they believed that uh, the latter rain was an anointing and a, a reality in God, and that you could uh, have a consecration unto the Lord instilled in your life where the elders could lay their hands upon you and prophesy over you and in the impartation of that, of that glory. Was uh, became a part of you, and I talked to uh, a lot of the there. There, there was uh, uh, this is about twenty five, thirty years ago. I had on my heart to do a video series of interviewing some of the latter rain uh, ministry that were still around uh, from those days. And ask them about that because you and I are at such a time right now. And I wanted to know what was on the hearts of the people. Did they know they were in the middle of that kind of moment? Because it wasn't, didn't start in thousands of people. It just started in a few. Just like a... The uh, Pentecostal revisitation of the early 1900s, that wasn't in mega churches. That was in a, a mission <laughs> in, in L.A. And it was happening over in, in other countries at that moment. But it wasn't in the big houses. It wasn't in the big meeting places. Uh, brother Seymour, William Seymour, a black brother was used of the Lord going through Topeka, Kansas, and seeing it demonstrated there, uh, he came into uh, the L.A. area, and all this is written down in, in as history by some very uh, far-looking people that realize we better write down the history of this because someday 
people are going to want to know how all this started. In the same way with the latter rain, you can read it uh, online or wherever. Uh, just search for latter rain movement. But uh, Brother Seymour went and uh, and he stayed with some other ministry in the house. And I remember reading about how Brother Seymour saw in a dream that he was going to lay hands upon those ministries and they were going to start speaking in tongues and have the baptism. And he came down and told them about it. And he laid hands on them and they got filled with the Spirit. Now this wasn't like today. This is like, you know, whoa, you know, are we, are, are we getting into something that's not God, you know? Because this is supposed to be only for the early church. So they had laid hands on, he had laid hands on them. And, and then they said, uh, when they went to church, they told the people about it. And they started praying for the people there and they all got filled with the Holy Spirit. Started speaking in tongues, prophesying. And out of that came what we see today. Worldwide. Everything that God started in a little thing, in a little people, it went into this huge thing that nobody at that time really uh, had no way of knowing that it would turn into that sort because they felt insignificant, right? They said, well, we're just a little people. We're just a little group. Yeah. So, you know, this must just be for us or something. Well, the latter rain was the same way. They just thought it was for the college there. But God started doing more things. And I talked to people who actually had God tell them, make a trip, go there. And I have something for you there. Uh, one of those men that I interviewed was uh, Michael Sitko uh, in Washington, Pennsylvania. And um, I don't know if Brother Sitko still alive or not. Uh, I had, I've been out of touch for quite a while. But Brother Sitko told me, he said he went up there and by faith, and uh, there were all these people up there, 24-hour ministry and prayer and just uh, this glory that was in that place. And he got prayed for and impartation into him. And um, he said, and, and I asked him, I said, Brother Sitko, uh, what was, tell me about that. I mean, what was the general uh, the, the, the general mindset of the people? When you, what would you say would be the things that stuck out to you that marked those people that were in the middle of that, of that, seed that God was going to grow and go worldwide with it. And he thought and he said, well, I'll tell you what, it was sacrifice. We all felt the spirit of sacrifice and of service. He said, in fact, I'll tell you how it was. He said, you know, this is a Quonset hut, and it was all bad weather. You know, the weather had broken up the ground, and, and, and the, it was all mud up there around the Quonset hut. And he said, of course, people walking in and out and everything, the floor was just, you know, filled with mud and, and all that. And so he said, I'm, I, I, I want to serve the Lord and his people. So he said, I'm going to get up at uh, real early in the morning. And so he set his alarm for, uh, I think it was three or four o'clock. And he said, I'm going to clean this whole place and have it clean for the people when they come in tomorrow. And so he did that and he walked through the door and there's already 10 people doing that. It was an atmosphere of giving. 
sacrifice, serving, humility, wonder at it all. Because I, I needed to know, because like I said, I think we're in such a time, and somebody better be writing some things down. <laughs> somebody better be, get the calling of a scribe and realize that we are in the time, Gary, of history being made. Exactly what I was History being made. Exactly. Now, uh, Somebody took it upon themselves to do that for that, that happening in Canada because they've got names, they've got dates, they've got what happened. They, they even wrote down the prophecies that was spoke forth. They had the insight or God put it in them to know this is historical. And, and we need to make a, a, a archive of that so that others like myself later on and many years later would be able to look back at that and say, okay, uh, I see what God did in, in, in the outbreak of, of Pentecost and I see what God did in the uh, outpouring of the latter rain movement and I saw what God has done in the sonship movement and, and I need to understand what attitude and what kind of a spirit I have to have in order to see God do the same thing now. Yes. Because it just may be that we are on the edge, on the cusp of something that is going to be so tremendous and so beyond the norm that people are going to start to be spoken by God, that there is a realm and a dimension that we're coming into that he wants the first fruit company of Jesus Christ to partake of it. Hallelujah. And uh, so I always have that on me. And this meeting this weekend, it just, you know, makes me think about it because I think we've had a very special time here. Uh, out of the norm. Uh, I haven't been in too many meetings like we've had this weekend. Amen? Uh, it, it's had its own special flavor and, and power and demonstration and seriousness and dealings and laughter and dancing and all of it has been in, in harmony with each other. Where we've moved, Darren, from one thing to another thing to another thing and not knowing what God's going to do next, but knowing that whatever he did it was going to complement what he's already done. Amen. Now, the latter rain uh, meetings, uh, uh, that went, uh, like I said, big ministers started going up there. Uh, Sister Beale in Detroit, Myrtle Beale, she went up there. Uh, got the impartation, and uh, she came back to Detroit and uh, started, uh, uh, well, didn't start it, but the, the same anointing that was up there, she brought back into Bethesda there in Detroit, and that became a center uh, for the latter rain. Same thing with Brother Sitko. He did that in Washington, Pennsylvania. It became a center and there, and there started to pop up all of these places out in California and Oregon and all over the United States. There started to come people that brought that anointing with them. And uh, it was a time of, uh, again, exterior things of miracles, yes. wonders, yes. signs, yes. Uh, miraculous things happened during the latter rain. They tell of uh, tent meetings where... The lights would go out and there was still lights. Uh, it, it, you could see the, the tent glowing in the dark. Uh, miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Yes. But of course, Pentecost and Latter Rain and Sonship, whatever movement you want to talk about, it eventually came under the control of 
men and women who wanted it to be controlled according to what their vision of it was. And of course, it starts to lose its glory then because God is a free agent and when his spirit's moving, it gets out of our control. No telling what God's going to do. And one pastor uh, went in to minister and he had a big church and I started ministering the kingdom word and he gets me in his back office and he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, I know what you're preaching. <laughs> you're preaching that sons of God stuff. And uh, he said, and I believe it. I believe it's real. But man, I can't, I can't let that happen here. I'll lose control. And this is what he really said to me. He said, I'll lose my kingdom. He didn't say church. He didn't say, I'll lose my kingdom. And I got up out of my seat at that point and I said, brother, you've already lost it. <laughs> you've already lost it because uh, when you try to save something that, that God wants to take away, then you're going to lose it. But we can't control this, Diane. We can't put our hands on this. This is getting to a point, you watch, was as God starts doing this in our midst, it's going to be a sovereign God thing. Amen. And it's going to have a life of its own. And we cannot maneuver it. We cannot uh, try to guide it. We can't try to make it look like we want it to look. It, it is breaking out of any barrier, of any channel that we would want to channel it in. And, and most of the time, the reason why we do that is because we want it to be more palatable. We want people to like it. So that they'll be a part of it, John. Right? We want our numbers to grow. And so the only reason why we would try to control something like this is so that we can get numbers. We can get more people in. And we keep doing that. And guess what God does every time? He starts willing the numbers back down. <laughs> I've tried to build in this word. And every time I'd have two or three families come in, you know, I'd be behaving myself. I would be normal. <laughs> My wife just informed me this morning, the only normal she knows about is a setting on a dryer. <laughs> but I thought, well, if we could just cool it a little bit. Don't be so wild, Bob. Don't start talking about life on both sides of the river. <laughs> Talk about Daniel or something or David or something or, you know, leave that stuff alone for a while so we can get some people in. But every time I start trying to get people in and, and we actually start having people come out, God will raise up a word that will just drive them right back out again. I know that sounds like it's opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. But... Yeah, we can't, we have to know our calling. Yes. We have to know what God's forming. Yes. And it's not another church. It really isn't. It's, it's, a, it's a special unit. It's a SWAT team. Special weapons and tactics. And we don't call out people from what God is doing. We don't choose and say, okay, they can be here, but we really don't want them. <laughs> we want this one, this one, but not them. The Spirit does that. Yes. God starts putting such a challenge in our midst, such a dealing word that the flesh cannot stay in the midst of it. 
We start ministering of things that must be spiritually discerned. The word of the Lord that comes forth out of these meetings is something that uh, the natural man can find nothing there to appease it. And the only ones that can remain in this realm and dimension are those whose spirit is leaping at it. Hallelujah. And it brings life into their being. Praise the Lord. But mark my word, we are at such a time as what it was in these early movements where God is starting to gather a people together in one mind, in one accord, with one heart. Hallelujah. And we're going to see unity in the midst of us like we've never seen it before. We're going to have to lose a lot of ourself. Well, how about all of ourself? And, and let God make of us whatever God has in mind. Amen. Are you ready for such a time as that? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. We've been summoned here by God. For such a time as this. We will not be silent, we will not hold back, by God's grace we will rise up for such a time as this, oh for such a time as this, for such a time as this. such a time as this. We will not be silent. We will not go back. But God is grace. We will rise up for such a time as this. Such a time as this. Such a time as this. We've been silent. Here by God for such a time as this. We will not be silent. We will not hold back. But by His grace, we will rise up for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Such a time as this. Such a time as this, oh, we will not be silent, we will not go back. But by His grace, we will rise up for such a time as this. Such a time as this, for such a time as this, we've been summoned. Such a time as this We will not be silent We will not go back But by His grace We will rise up For such a time as this Such a time as this For such a time as this We've been summoned such a time as this We will not be silent We will not hold back By His grace we will rise up For such a time as this Let's give my hand this morning You may be seated Now, if we're going to go on in this word, we're going to have to learn protocol. Not man's protocol. Not how to behave according to man's terms of behavior. Spiritual protocol. And by that I mean every one of us starting to tune in to the Lord. 
I'm looking for a time to come, and I don't believe this is outlandish. I believe this is a very uh, real thing that can be done and will be done in God. Where we will all come into a meeting and we will all have the mind of Christ concerning Amen. that meeting. Amen. There will be no surprises. no surprises. And we will all be participating by joining ourselves all together in the heavens together. Amen. We saw a little bit of that last night. We saw a little bit of that div type of divine order that God wants to establish in the midst of his people. Amen. Where we were all together in whatever God was doing. Amen. Didn't matter who was doing it. That's right. We were all together in it. We were ready for it, were we not? Amen. Amen. I sensed it in this place. Yes, amen. God could have told somebody to roll a peanut across the floor with their nose and everybody would have went crazy. <laughs> Whatever you want, Lord. Amen. And that's the kind of abandonment we're going to have to come yes. into. Amen. That's the kind of unity and harmony that God's wanting out of a people so that we can start seeing the mighty works of God yes. in the midst of a people. Hallelujah. We're in the beginning stages of all of that. But if I can be so bold as to say that anyone that is coming into this day out from another day of order and expression, say from Pentecost Feast of Pentecost into the Feast of Tabernacles. No matter what our feeling on all of this is, it is my position that we need mentors. Amen. We need leaders that will lead by example. Yes. And not just lord it over a people. Amen. But we need those that have at least been able to be put in positions throughout the length of their ministries that have seen things in God where it was glorious or it was flesh. Amen. And we need those in the midst of us that can point the way out yes. and say, this is the way to go. Yes. Because I've been down that other road and you know what? It's not good. That's not leading unto life. That's leading into bondage. That's leading into spiritual uh, a wickedness in high places. That's where our egos get uh, turned loose on us. And the result of it is greed, lust, and power. But this way here, this is a small way. I know it is. I know there's not very many going this way. But I'm telling you, if we go this way, they're going to meet God. Hallelujah. And God is going to pour out upon us something that is going to change not only us, but the world. Hallelujah. And you see, whatever God leads us down isn't that which people think is, 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 is it. Because they're looking on the outside. Yes. But we have to have another eye in us that yes. sees what God sees. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So I'm looking in the days ahead for there to be some real lessons on protocol. On, on being able to wait upon the Lord. To wait upon the Lord. To be silent yes. before the Lord. Yes. Not to get nervous if nothing's going on. I've been brought up that way. That has been a big part of my ministry coming to this hour in the Lord. Is sitting still in a service waiting upon the Lord. And... Used to be that when you tried to do that sort of thing, that people have this thing in them, and I know you'll identify with this. You know the same people probably. <laughs> if there's a, a pause and a silence, 
in the service. They think that's God making a way for them to get up and tell us everything they know. <laughs> right? We've all been in those services. When God's wanting to still and settle everything until every eye is upon him, our ears are open to him. Our thoughts are upon him. The flesh takes that as a time to get up and put its wares on display. But there's going to come a people where they're going to be able to sit still before the Lord and not get nervous. You ever hear these people that uh, when they used to have these think tanks, these suspended Tanks where you go in and they, I don't know what kind of fluid they had in there, but you would float. Sensory, non-sensory tanks is whatever they called them. Where people would, uh, does anybody know what I'm talking about? I knew Sarah would, I knew Sarah would. <laughs> and you would go into these tanks so that there's nothing, no sensory Uh, discernible sensory for you. You would be totally by yourself in this tank, no sound, and you're not like even feeling something you're sitting on or laying on. This is suspended in fluid. So there's nothing distracting. And do you know people almost went crazy in those tanks? They had some serious mental problems happen in those tanks because they could not handle being by themselves, in tune with themselves. Because deep down, we really don't like to be alone with ourselves. So we always had the TV going or the the radio. (laughs) There you go. Uh, The uh, MP3 AirPods. We have to have some kind of stimulant in order to keep us from getting alone with ourselves, right? Well, this is the same thing that makes us nervous in the services when God steals it. And we think that something's got to be happening. Come on, come on, let's keep it going. And instead, God's just wanting to speak in the silence into us and let us know what it is to be Alone with God. Hallelujah. Because we can't do it at home. We can't, uh, unless we, uh, you know, dropped our kids off somewhere. And uh, and I don't know how you'd ever do it in your home. Too much is going on all the time. So sometimes these services are more about healing in the inner man. Having all of our frustrations silenced and and all of our feelings come into a place where God can just start to work out of us all of that anxiety and frustration and anger, all of that. But we have to be, and Charlotte wrote a song on that. Let's see if I can read it to you. Um, you know where it's at. (laughs) Will you love him in the silence just as in the high, high praise? And I don't see it as the title. But that's what the song is about. Will you love him in the silence? Will you be just as tuned into him in the silence as we are in the high, high praise where everything's just exploding all around and all the, all the sensory is, is at a high pitch and everything and oh my God, God is here. Well, will you love him in the silence of his appearing also? What did the prophet do? What did God show the prophet? It wasn't in the, the wind. It wasn't in the storm. It's in the still, small voice that he heard God. 
And that's where we're at as priest kings. We have to know God in that special place. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus leave and go up to the mountain? To get alone. To get away from the distraction of flesh. To get up where it was only him and God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's going to help us in the days to come. Amen. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. And, um, and I know that God's going to do some fantastic things uh, for us in the days to come. But I really don't know what it's going to look like. And we've been saying that for quite a while now. Nobody really knows what this is going to look like what it's going to feel like, all of that. I just know that we're going to have to get to a, such a maturity in Christ that we will receive him, even though he appears to us in a way that we don't recognize him to begin with. Amen. So it may be as we're walking along, and all of a sudden we hear his voice, and we realize, Lord, Master, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I want John Castleman to come, and then I want Gary Gatlin to come and minister the word, but let's give John Castleman a big hand. Uh, glad he's here, praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I always have to adjust this thing for short folks here. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what a beautiful time we are in. This is a season of great change in God's people. Amen. Healing wings and the change he brings. I think Bob's most recent song it opened up with spirit wings fluttering overhead. And we've been seeing butterflies everywhere. Doesn't sound so theological, so heavy, but God is simple like that and beauty. You know, the natural illustrates the spiritual, doesn't it? Ivy and I can't get away from uh, butterflies for the life of us. <laughs> and the life that was from the beginning was manifested, right? That their own eyes saw and that their own hands touched, amen? Yeah. It was manifested back then and it's being manifested at this time as well. Amen. For uh, there is a season for every purpose under heaven, a time, right? And like I said, this is a season of the greatest change in the earth. Praise God. Praise Have we loved his appearing Amen. and everything that goes with it, yes. right? Yes. It comes with a crown of righteousness, doesn't it? In the end, it crowns us, his appearing does. Amen. If we can only learn to cooperate a little bit with the, proce with the process, then we might make some progress. Amen. Amen. That our soil conditions can be right in our heart, right? Amen. Blessed is she who has believed, right? That there would be a fulfillment of the word, uh, right? That was spoken to her. And there's a fulfillment in this hour, friends, of the word that has been spoken over us. And that word was spoken from the beginning. And in these last days, he's speaking to us now through his son, right? Yes. The word made flesh. And like Bob says, we're learning to hear and receive and to believe that simple yes and say, Lord, we want what you have for us. We believe this fledgling little seed, if the soil conditions can be made right, I can posture my heart right. Yes, sir. If I can be right before God and man. Yes. My Amen. spirit can be made right before God. Amen. That fledgling little seed can turn in over time, can turn into a mighty oak of righteousness. Amen. I don't know if you ever had God just call you to stand in some place where you just stand there. And you might feel like a fledgling little seed at first. But if you'll just stand, there's a great mystery and secret tied up in endurance and perseverance. You grow in strength, don't you, over time as you obey the Lord. And you just stand in that place and you say, well, Lord, I've been standing. What do I do? Keep standing. Yes. Just keep standing in yes. place, right? Yes. You're not moving. You're standing. And the Lord is, is uh, drenching you with his life and strength. Amen. And fruit is growing. You can become shade for others, don't you? Yes. And so the Lord is doing a great work in a people who um, <clears throat> it will be impossible for them not to see us, to see him in us in the days ahead. Amen. Right. And no one is accepted from this great change he is bringing. You know, when the Lord told, when the angel, the messenger told Mary, 
that she was going to be, you know, she was great with child, right? And she would bring forth, he said, and thy cousin, the old Elizabeth, in her old age, hath also, can you say, hath also conceived. He needs all hands on deck at this time, doesn't he? <laughs> no one is accepted from this great change he is bringing, okay? And she went to full term as well. The Lord is doing a great work in us at this yes. time. And I think some of us are going to be shocked. Some of us, if we can get in a candid moment, might say, you know, I've about all but given up on change, seeing changes in myself or others or my circumstances. It's been so many years. But indeed, right, we count those blessed who endure. Amen. And we saw the end. What did Job say? All my days I will wait for my change. Amen. Yes. Is God yes. faithful? Blessed is her or him who has Thank believed Lord. there would be a what? A fulfillment of this yes. beautiful word made flesh in us. Amen. Yes. And God is faithful. You know, it says in the Psalms, it says that our fathers trusted in you. And then it says again, they trusted. That's twice. Mm -hmm. And you delivered them. Salvation. He will show his salvation to us, won't he? He loves us so very much. Yes. We had a little baby shower uh, last weekend at my house. And uh, Ivy and my daughters were down there for it. It was for my youngest daughter. And all the ladies were downstairs, and I was alone, Bob. I was sitting in the apartment alone, and the Lord began to speak to me about this baby shower, which he calls Mary's Magnificat, where she goes on to speak of the great things that he hath done, right? She prophesies when he hadn't even been born yet. Right. He's going to do this great thing and that yes. great thing, right? If only we can learn to cooperate, to believe, and we can see um, these great things done in us as well. You know, it says in, uh, we want to read a couple of verses. Is that okay real quick? Yes. And I won't go on long. But I want to read a couple of verses today. Thank you, Lord. This is Genesis 1.11. And God said on the third day, how many know we're in a third day right now, the dawn, and with the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Amen. And there's a dawn here. Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. Yes. And it was so. Do you know that earth is us and the grass that is coming up and the green and the flourishing? It says here in Psalm 72, right here in verse, let me find it here. Um, 17, let's see, 16, there shall be a handful of grain in the earth upon the top of the mountains, the fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, and they of the city, the new Jerusalem, the city of the great king, which we are, right, shall flourish like the grass of the earth. Everything that is in us in the seed is coming forth at this time. Yes. And uh, it's to his glory and not ours, even if we've got to go through some things, right? Um, but he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Even if, we, even if we've got to go through some things on the side of our mother, amen? amen. Until we get to that other side, and until we cross over, right, that river of sorts. So Mary's Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord. Is how she opens that up. You know, we had magnified ourselves before. We had exchanged our glory, his image and likeness, yeah. in which we originally created for the image of a brute beast, right? Because we had magnified our soul selves. Yeah. But there won't be any magnifying of us in the days to come. We're not going to take any glory. It's not about us. It's all about him. And he's going to get all the glory. This is the place he's seen so clearly in a people. Amen? He's going to be seen in his lowliness and in his, in, his, in his lordship in every area. It'll be undeniable, I believe, in the days ahead. Amen. It says, <clears throat> back to those butterflies, but as many as who believed, right, uh, he gave the power, that's in the becoming, to become sons of God, full-grown sons of God. Yeah. We're in that cocoon-like place. But it is coming forth, the life that is from the beginning in us. And he's teaching us and giving us the grace to cooperate with him all along the way. He loves us so much. It will not return his seed, his word, void, right? It's coming forth in us in a beautiful way for his glory. Amen. Amen. He, he's just faithful. He, he can't help it through all our trials. It may not look like it. It seems like an eternity to us. Yeah. But is he not faithful? 
I see him coming forth in you, Darren. I see you with the grandchildren, and you're, you're hauling out luggage. You're doing this and that. I see Zach growing like leaps and bounds. It's coming forth in you guys. Amen. Some of us are older. It's coming forth. Amen. Ivy's commenting on the beauty of the people, how sincere. There's no pretense, and the love in the people, and there's just a, an authenticity in this room, in this house, and under this Whoa. ministry, it drips with authenticity, Whoa. with sincerity, praise God. It has no other aim than what the Lord wants to do. I so appreciate Bob keeping us on that right track, you know, and keeping our aim, because we get off, don't we, at times. It isn't easy to get off track. We need houses of the Lord where there's just direction and instruction and counsel. Right. There's a depth and there's a root. There's roots. We can grow deep in, yes. in this word, amen, yes. in, in these yes. places. Amen. But he's had to endure some things. He's been doing this a while. It takes time. There's seasoning. There's age and ripening, right, of us. And there's wisdom that has to come about. All these graces are in Christ. Amen. And isn't he beautiful? Yes. Let me just look here real quick <clears throat> and make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I think I, what does it say back to that silence, Bob? I was thinking... The Lord in his, is in his holy temple, right? Be silent before him, all the yes. earth, right? Amen. Just know he is there, he's in there. Amen. Get accustomed to the silence because it's coming. Thank That's when we come to know him in the days ahead. You, Praise God. Thank you, Father. There was something else on my heart before I turn it over here to, um, I think it's Gary. Thank you, Lord. You know, she said, Elizabeth said, the, the old said to the young, she said, <clears throat> after Mary had said yes, oh, what he can do with our yes, Elizabeth said, um, and blessed be the fruit of your womb. I think that's what the Lord is doing today. He's blessing the fruit of your womb. No doubt he's going to grow in fullness, right? There's a lot of spiritual babies and things, but it doesn't have to be that way. He's watching over us. He's causing us to grow all the way up in this hour. Amen. Yeah. The glory is going to be seen. Amen. So I think today the word really is um, the Lord is blessing the fruit of our womb. He's causing us to go to come to full stature in him. And it's not just like what the world, the religious people think, right? There's a beautiful expression coming forth, a corporate one. Oh. Amen. And he's going to be glorified in his people. And uh, we just we're walking in it now. We're walking in it these days. Hallelujah. Let me come to this other place. Sometimes you just have to be patient a minute. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I had this thought yesterday, and I feel this is out in the Internet land, Bob. Some who are listening have been caught down in all manner of besetting sin patterns, those things that were passed down to them in the natural lineage, in addictions. They've been in bondage to all manner of things for a long time now. You've been under the elemental things of this world. But, but, but like Bob said, quoting John's epistle, that as he is in this world anointed, so are we. Amen. Yeah. And some of you out there are about to have a Psalm 20, verse 6, like now you know that the Lord saves his anointed moment. Yes, Praise God. We have not known, you have not known where you have not known the power of God to save, to deliver, set you free, make you whole. You're going to know that in the days to come. Yes. Amen. His hand is not shortened. His strength is not abated. Amen. Amen. Some of you are waiting on a manifestation of this power and this change he's bringing. And I'm telling you, it's coming to you. You are weary. You've been under all those elemental things for many, many years. And I know what it's like. Yes. Praise God. We know what you thank him. Where's Jamie? If she was here, she could testify, couldn't she, to this saving power. I said, I will tell of all his wondrous works. Yes. Amen. They knew his mighty saving power, his saving acts it hasn't changed today. He still saves. He still delivers. Amen. Yes, He's yes. faithful. He's good to us. So some of you are about to have a Psalm 20, verse 6. Now you know that the Lord saves his anointed. Mm -hmm. Amen. See if there's anything else here. A few things I heard. Thank you, Lord. We love you today, Father. We thank you. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Don't you, don't you love the name of the Lord? They have all these names of the Lord. There's like 350. How many? I don't know. If the theologians could tell us how many of those Hebrew names. Everybody makes a big deal. You've got to call him this or you've got to call him that. You know what my favorite name of his has become? The life. The life that was from the beginning, John says. The life. They call him the life. When Christ, who is our life, appears... In us, right? Yeah. And we too shall be where? With him where? In glory. glory. Oh, glory. I'll fly away, oh, glory. <laughs> right? And not just in the sweet by and by someday. Amen? <laughs> but in my inner man, because that's where we're locked up, isn't it? Yes. In that earthly clod, right? But the seed we read about in Genesis 1, right? Verse 11, that is hidden there. This is a time of great change. There's a season for everything. And that life, that life that is hidden, is coming forth, is being manifested Amen. at this time. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. So grateful we can sit in his silence. Indeed, you count them. We count them blessed who endured. He gives the grace to endure, doesn't he? Hallelujah. So he's teaching us, in closing here, to cooperate with the process. Posturing our hearts, our spirits right before him. Right. The soil conditions. He does all that too, doesn't he? Right. He prepares the, the, they prepare the way of the Lord. He removes all the obstacles out of us, doesn't he? Yeah. That he might come through. He yes. might be manifested. Yeah. I so love the Lord and I'm thankful yeah. for him and for all of you. And for this glorious weekend we had together, and for the opportunity to testify of his faithfulness. Thank and I just bless the fruit of your womb today. You, you shall not fail. He will not Amen. fail or forsake you. Your strength shall not fail. The Lord is the strength of our heart. Amen. And our portion forever. He's our inheritance. Amen. We just give him praise and glory today. Amen. Thank you, Bob. And thank you all. Bless you, John. feel real peace, don't you? Yes. Don't you love the word of the Lord? Amen. I mean, when John was expounding and reading scripture, I just feel the word of the Lord just wash over me. Amen. And uh, in moments like these, yes. I will sing out a song. I will sing out a love song to Jesus in moments like these. I will lift up my hands. I will lift up my hands to Jesus. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I Just peace, love, and joy. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, here's Gary Gatlin, and it's about ready to get a little ruckus around here. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody get ready for Gary Gatlin. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's been great thus far. Amen. Yes. And I was thinking, uh, as Bob was talking earlier today, 
sitting there last night, and what a, a high, powerful manifestation of God yes. in such a purity. Yes. And the thought came to me as I was sitting there, we are witnessing history, mm. whether or not we realize it. We're witnessing right. history. Uh, you know, my mind began to go back uh, to some of the things that a lot of us have witnessed in our own lifetime. Uh, some of us remember back in the late 60s, I want to say 69, when we saw the man walking on the moon. Not realizing we were seeing history. It might have been a certain level of entertainment to us, but it was history. Amen. And, 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 you know, you can probably remember where you were on the morning of 9-11. Right. We were witnessing history. And, and how almost common our surroundings are when we're witnessing history. Right. Yes. Right. And I was thinking of how we were sitting here in a service pretty much like we've been in for a lot of years. Right. Not realizing the timing of the Lord made this history. Yes. And I was thinking, and, and I want to share, I don't know how much time i got, Bob, so y'all have to... Keep me on the straight and narrow here, but I was thinking of how that uh, in the book of Chronicles, I believe it is, David had been king over Judah for seven years, and it came time for a change. And so, and how many knows we've been feeling in our spirit change? We, we started off this meeting this weekend with "Change me, Lord." Yes, and we feel deep within us, the necessity of this change. We cannot go on like we are or have been. There's got to be a change. And let's face it, we've done all we can to change. And we feel it's still short. Amen? So now it's up to God. And because of this, it reminds me of the Bible said when it came time for the change of an order. Boy, here again, we get tangled up in words. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> but the Bible says the people came together knowing it's time for a change, but nobody knows what to do. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Kind of like us. Yes. Change is here. Good. What's the change? I don't know. Do you know? No, I don't either. I just know it's time. And the Bible says that the sons of Issachar came with a mind to know what the people ought to do. Yes. Who are these sons of Issachar? The name Issachar, he was a son of, of Leah. And his name means a man for hire. And his blessing was, his blessing was, to be a beast of burden. To carry the load. God's got some men and women that have been carrying this load for a while. And whether or not we know it, Mavis, these men and women have a mind to know what we ought to do. I don't know if this is making any sense or not. But God began to speak to me something, and I want to share it with you just for a little bit if I can. Because we're headed into some super serious territory we've never been before. And make no mistake about it, God's got too much invested in this kingdom to let a bunch of knuckleheads rule it. If you think for one second we're going to be allowed to take over the kingdom of God with some hidden agenda in the bottom of our spirit, we are sadly mistaken. That's why we've been in the dealings of the Lord so seriously for the last probably years. And we begin to feel it like never before. We're in some serious dealings. Yes. Amen. And because of that, God is changing us, our nature, our character, our thoughts, everything about us. So that when we open our mouth, we're saying like Jesus, I only say what I hear my father say. I don't add my little two cents. Amen. <laughs> Dare enough what I mean. 
I don't add what I think God means. Come on, how many knows we get lost in the interpretation there uh, yes. when we try to help God explain yes. stuff? Right. Oh, Lord. And the Lord began to quicken this to me last night as Darren was ministering such a powerful, powerful word. Yes. And he stopped there just for a minute and he began to say something very profound that I don't know if, if everybody even caught. But he began to name different ones saying, I need you. I need you. I need you. And he began to name different ones. And it began to hit my spirit. How that, and you can turn with me if you want to, to, to 1 Corinthians 12. And I'm just going to read one scripture. You, the, the, whole, the whole thing is powerful. Uh, if I can find this thing. Thank God for electronics, huh? I don't know how God spoke before that. I want to say it's about the, the 24th verse. So, and the, the whole chapter is powerful. And what it speaks about is the body of Christ. It's talking about there's one body. Okay, I'm just, just to summarize the first 20 whatever verses. It's talking about there's only one body. And, 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 and a couple of verses above that it says, God has placed us in the body as it pleases Him, yes. not you. Not me. I don't get a choice who's next to me. I don't get a choice who walks with me. God does this. And we need each other. And, and I was sharing with, with, with Bob and Bobby Jean this morning a little bit. How that the Lord began to speak to me about this body of Christ. There's only one body. Amen. There's not an Old Testament body. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are not in a different body than us. Paul, Peter, James, John, they're not in a different body than us. I don't care if they lived 2,000 years ago. They're in the same body because there's only one body. And this one body, God has put together. And it goes something like this. What part of your body, just, your, you know, the Apostle Paul here likens the body of Christ to a natural body. What part of your body are you willing to do without? Come on, I got a knife right here. What part, what part do you want to separate from you? Because when it comes down to it, you kind of like all your parts. I mean, you might have a cut or something on your finger, and it might cause you a lot of irritation and frustration. You've got to slap a Band-Aid on it and favor it a little bit because it hurts a lot. But, but let's face it, you don't want to lose it because you know at some point it's going to be healed. And so it is with us. God has added us together. And the Apostle Paul says, what right does the hand have to say to the foot. See, God has placed us in the bodies that pleases Him, and whether or not you realize, we're not all the same part. Oh, we might all preach, we might all sing, we might all do whatever, but we're still different. And it's not up to me, it's not up to me to dictate to you what, what you ought to be doing. You know, it, it goes something like this. It goes something like this because I, I can remember an old Pentecost, we used to pray all the time, prayer request. Pray for me, I can find the will of God. Pray for me, I can find the will. I want to find out where I fit in the body of Christ. And I learned years ago, people know exactly where they belong. They just don't like it. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's true. What it, what it kind of it, it, it kind of goes something like this, you know. And, and, and it, 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 if I can put it to you like this, it, depending on who you ask, I play the guitar. Depending on who you ask. Some say it's a joyful noise. Some say not so joyful. But, but let's, just say, let's just say that my foot decides 
It's tired of being a foot and it wants to be a hand. Like a lot of God's people, we don't like what we are, so we're going to change positions. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. My foot says, I'm tired of being stuffed down in this sock and this shoe. And what I want to do is I want to be a hand. I want to wear a watch and a ring. So I put a watch and a ring on my foot. Now I'm going to play the guitar. I now have three hands and one foot. Oh, Lord. How many know that's dysfunctional? We wonder why. Come on now, what it says. That's why there's many sick and weak among you because you discern not the body of Christ. Yes. And this is what we've been doing. And we wonder why we're not ruling and reigning. We wonder why there's no miracles. We wonder why the world is not being reconciled and restored. Because we can't restore ourselves. But God says, I have caused you to get ready to witness history. I'm putting my principles to work here. Because now it's time that we heal each other. And realize, I may not understand you. I may not believe like you. I may, you may just aggravate me to death. But I still need you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Is this making any sense? We got to have each other. Now, the Lord began to quicken something to me. And I, I want to get over into it just real quickly if I can. I'll try not to be lengthy. But I want you to hear this, how that the Bible says, because this is what I see taking place. I see that there's an inner work that's going into us that is changing us. And I believe Dennis really brought it out so beautifully the other night that we become reconciliation. Doctrines don't do anything but divide. I'm sorry. They just don't. Doctrines just, I mean, it's fine that we all believe this or we believe that or we don't believe. I mean, that's fine. Who cares? The point of the matter is, what are you becoming? That we become reconciliation. I don't believe it. I need to become it. That's what the world way. Let me tell you something. Uh, 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 You know, this being Sunday morning, there's literally hundreds of thousands of churches all over the world of every belief, denomination, whatever. Not even Christian per se. And guess what? They all have one thing in common. They all believe they're preaching truth. I don't care how far apart they are. They think they're preaching truth. So who's preaching truth? The ones that become. Jesus didn't say, I believe the truth. He said, I am the truth, the way. I am it. God's looking for some people to raise up, the sons of God to raise up and say, I am it. And he's changing us so that we become it. How do we become reconciliation? We become reconciliation because we reconcile. Oh, my. We heal. Yes. Amen. We forgive. Yes. Oh, God, help me. Yes, Thank you. Well, bless God, I'm going to forgive, but I ain't going to forget. <laughs> Don't make me preach there. <laughs> Come on now. If we forget. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Come on. Come on. Reminds me. We, 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 we love that story of the prodigal son. And we don't realize the story ain't the prodigal son. Well, that's the religious version. The prodigal son. Everybody here knows the story of the prodigal son. The problem is that that's not what the story's about. The story's about the father. The father that waits every day looking down the road waiting on the son. Uh, he's, the father has already forgiven him long before the son ever wakes up in the... Oh. Long before he wakes up in the pig pen, long before the son says, I can go, I can go to my father's house. Uh, his servants eat better than this. Long before he come to that understanding, the father had already forgiven him and was restoring him. The father restored him before he ever come through the gate. And I'm here to tell you that's what God's looking for in this hour. Some sons of God that have the nature of the Father. Oh, hallelujah. Not say, well, bless God, I'm right and you're wrong. Honey, we're here to be reconciliation. We're here to heal and restore. Oh, hallelujah. 
I remember the scripture there in the book of Acts. The Bible says, and I want us to hear this because this is where I see God's people heading. Amen. Just like we saw, uh, uh, like Bob was talking about there uh, uh, in 1906, Azusa Street. Those people came together just like North Battleford and on and on and on. All these great, great moves of God. People had no clue they were part of history. And I, don't, I want to tell you something. I don't want to witness history. I want to be a part of it. I want somebody someday else to look back and say, yeah, I remember that crazy guy who was right in the middle of that stuff. But I, I, I want you to know something. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Peter was walking through the streets of Jerusalem. Are you with me? That's what he was doing, walking. The Bible, come on now. You Bible scholars, fact check me. Keep me going straight here. He wasn't walking around Shonda Mokondian. The Bible said he was walking through the streets. That's all he was doing. But everywhere his shadow touched. He didn't lay hands on somebody. He didn't prophesy to somebody. Everybody. The Bible says they were all healed. Amen. Now watch this. That word there, shadow, in the Greek is only used twice with this definition. It is found, the only other time that word is found is when the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, Thou hast found favor. For the Holy Ghost shall over... You're going to bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, I like this. How many knows it was not a natural shadow? How many knows how you get a natural shadow? You block the light. How many knows we're good at that? I'll leave that alone. God help us. We block the light all the time. That word in the Greek means an outward glowing from a within light. That meant, oh, come on now, help me out. If it were a natural shadow, Peter would have to walk down the street in the morning and the only time you'd get healed if he's on the other side. Oh, nobody wants to help me. If you were laying, if you were laying, you had to get on the other side of the streets in the afternoon. God help you if he walked on you in high, high noon. That step on you to get you healed. But how many knows that wasn't it? He was walking. Everywhere he walked was healed. Can I tell you something? I believe that God is raising up some men and women of God in this hour that is going to be so changed with his nature in them that when we get up and we're going to do like Peter, amen, we're going to get up. I don't know where he was going. The Bible just said he was walking. It doesn't say the what. He was just walking. It doesn't say anything. We try to make them super spiritual. But Peter was getting somewhere, going from A, point A to point B. Yeah. And as he was doing it, God was, why? Because God loved his creation. They needed healing. Can I tell you something? This is my opinion. I believe we are now in the place. There is such a change taking place in a people that their nature is becoming one with his. And as we get up, we're going to wake up one day and, I don't know, go to Walmart. <laughs> I, I believe there's going to be Walmarts in heaven. I don't know. <laughs> Better be or we're in trouble, ain't we, Bob? <laughs> there ain't no Walmarts in heaven. I don't want to go. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But we're going to wake up and go. I don't know. Maybe they got a sale. Who knows? I just got, a, just got an email a while ago. Walmarts rolled back some prices. So we got to hurry up and dismiss. <laughs> I'm kidding. But we're going to go there. We're not going to be feeling goosebumps and doodads. We're going because we're carnal as dirt. And we're going to go because we need something. And so we go there. But we don't know that on the next aisle over, there's somebody that's on their last hope. Somebody needs God to move. 
Somebody's in an abusive relationship. Somebody's, the kids are on. We don't know what's going on. Somebody needs a healing. And all we know is that God has changed us because of our walk with him. And as we go walking down the aisle, honey, something's gonna begin to radiate out of us into that next aisle and God's gonna begin to heal and restore. Why? Because we are healing. We are reconciliation. Just like Jesus told him in the book of John, the 11th chapter, when Mary and Martha was looking, Lord, if only you'd have been here, our, husband, our, our brother would not have died, but it's too late now. Uh, he's dead. And Jesus said, don't you know your brother will live again? Yeah, Lord, some glad morning. When this life is o'er, he'll get up. But, and Jesus said, no, I am that last day. I am the great day. I am the resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. And this is what the world is waiting on. They're not waiting on somebody to point the road down there some glad morning. They're not waiting on somebody to say, hang on, Jesus is coming. They're not waiting on that. They want somebody that says, I am the resurrection. I am the healing. I am reconciliation. I am all of these things. Yet not I, but Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe we're witnessing that right now. And I'm going to tell you something right now. This is just my feeling from the depth of my heart. I've been in this almost 50 years, give or take some. I'm talking about this word. I was in old Pentecost for that. I'd hate, I would hate, and I refuse to walk this walk this long, Mavis, and lose out just because I don't want to forgive? Because I don't want, because I want to think I'm right and you're not? Or you don't want to walk with me? I refuse to be your enemy. I don't care. I don't care. There's too much to gain. Yes. To lose. Yes. We're in a serious time. Yes. Amen. Well, they shouldn't have said that. They shouldn't have done that. Hurt my feelings. Who cares? Amen. Or something greater. Yes. The apostle Paul said, for I reckon yes. the sufferings of this present time are not worthy yes. to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Yes. There's a glory that is now being revealed, Melanie. It's being revealed. My God, and when you get your eyes on the prize, I'm going to tell you something, all this piddly stuff that we're wrestling with means nothing for the glory that's being revealed in us. Is this making any sense to anybody? I'm only speaking for myself, Bob. I'm only speaking for myself. Amen. I, I, I refuse to have an enemy. And I know there are some, and let me tell you something. If I've done you wrong and, and, and you come back at me, you know what I'm thinking? I deserve it. That ain't my problem. I don't battle that. Do you know what I battle? Well, I ain't done nothing wrong. And you decide to attack me. Bless God. Come on now. I'm holy and righteous. I've done nothing, Josh. How dare them? Come on now. Is this all right? Yes, sir. Just like I said, just like we were talking about in the beginning. Amen. God, we ain't got no trouble with God taking away our bad side. It's the good side we wrestle with. I mean, in our come on now, in our mind, in our hearts, Adam and Eve, they missed God when they ate the fruit of the tree of evil. The good was okay. Because it's good. Oh, come on now. I'm a good guy. God can surely use that. I'm not a total loss. I, I got my faults and I, I deserve a lot of stuff. But let's face it, I'm a pretty good guy overall. I ain't killed nobody lately. <laughs> but 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 can I tell you something? God has to get rid of all of that. Yes. 
He is a consuming fire. And he's going to take all your goodness. We've already offered up our badness. We got no badness. All we got is goodness. But he's going to offer up our goodness into that consuming fire. And for our ashes, he's going to give us beauty. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. Is this making any sense to anybody? Because I'm telling you what, folks. We are in a serious time in God. When he says, I am taking everything out of you unlike me. That consuming fire, Darren, is burning up wood, hay, stubble. Amen. And that fire of God is beginning to purify the gold and the silver and the precious stones and purifying it so that all that's left is him. And when I open my mouth, oh, my God, I can honestly and truly say, Father, forgive them. Whatever they're doing, Father, forgive them. Uh, For they know. Oh, not what they do. Why? Because there's a greater purpose that's taken place in our midst. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been through hell. Why? So that he can take out us and put himself in because our creation is groaning and dying and they're waiting on somebody to be something other than religious. I don't care how much scripture we quote. The devil quotes scripture better than all of us. Yes. There's atheists no more about the Bible than most Christians. That's true. So it's not in the dead letter. No, it's not. What can we live and manifest? Yes. I believe this weekend we have seen God in the midst of this meeting, in the midst of these services, change some hearts, Amen. change some minds. Just like Issachar. Issachar, Bob was mentors. They were fathers and didn't even know it. They just, they, 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 they were busy fulfilling their blessing, which was bearing burdens. That's, that's, that's what their blessing was. They were the beast of burden. We got, some, we got some people in this house even today, some that are watching, that we've been carrying these things. This, I'm talking about this word. We've been carrying this thing for a long time. We didn't even know why other than the fact that we've been carrying this thing. And God says, here's the reason why. When everybody else is dancing, you're weighted down with a burden of the singing cannot dance. When everybody else is singing songs and rejoicing, honey, we've been in the back of the, of the room, if you please, uh, carrying this thing. God says, it's because I put in you the mind to know which way the people ought to go. And we're getting ready to head into a direction we've never gone before. Amen. We're treading territory we've never been before. Amen. And for anybody to act like they're experts, you're a fool. Amen. Hello, walls. Yes. Come on now. You know, Bob and I were talking here a while back about some of our mentors and some of our Elders and fathers and the different ones. And they've crossed over. They've crossed over. You know what? God's raising up some Issachars in the house. Some sons. That's carrying this thing. This thing's not ending. It's fixing to take off in a new level. We're witnessing this thing. And let me just say this. I'm going to try to quit. i got to quit. I don't even know what time it is. got to quit. The, 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 the place where we are is this. Because I am not the hand, I have no right to judge the foot. Because I'm not the right hand, I have no right to judge the left hand. Watch out now. You know what separ- they say what separates humans from the animal kingdom per se? They call it opposable. You might be the beautiful finger. I have no right to judge you because I'm opposable. Oh, nobody wants to help me there. Come on now. 
we judge each other not realizing you're not the standard. I'm not the standard to be judged against. If you just itching to judge somebody, judge yourself against Christ. Yes. He's the standard. Yes. He's the standard. Yes. And I've said this, and I'm going to try to close with this, but I want you to hear this. Whether or not I, and I, and, and I believe God has allowed me and, and many of us to look into the realm of the Spirit and see a destiny. Whether or not I'm one of the ones that's going to step into the fullness of that destiny on this side. Maybe it's I don't know. I don't know. I, I've known people that said, oh, I am, I am, I am, and they died. We've all known people like that. Oh, God showed me I'm going to live forever, and then they're dead. I don't know if I'm one or not. I don't know. Sometimes I wake up and barely can get up. So I don't know. But whether I am or not does not change the fact that God has somebody that will. Yes. So here's what I feel. I feel it's my job, my purpose to encourage you, strengthen you, and push you up as far as I can. Because you might be the one. Ron, if you're the one, I'm going to push you as hard as I can. And while he's making the transition into the fullness on this side, I'm hanging on his coattails. <laughs> it's not important that I'm the one. Right. We act like it's a race and whoever's first gets the prize. Right. Right. Oh, come on now. The Apostle Paul began to talk about I run the race. I run the race. And he's talking about run the race. If you, you know, we just had the Olympics not long ago, and everybody, they were running them track races. And uh, guess what? Whoever, whenever that, that guy or woman or whatever it was, whenever it crossed the finish line, and, and they go across the finish line, they didn't say, okay, your right hand won. Your right hand crossed the line first. No, the whole body won. The whole thing won. Guess what? If I can get you to win, I win. Amen. If I can get you to cross over, I made it. Patty, I made it if I can get you over. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because we're one body. We're just one. You don't have to like it. We just are. Oh, hallelujah. Here's a little secret. If, if, if I can get, you know, how many knows this is true? If any part of your body hurts, your whole body hurts. Yes. Amen, Elsie. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I wasn't there when she fell. We need pictures. <laughs> but I, now, now, she'll have to verify this whether or not it's true or not. I don't know. But when she fell and it hit, hit her face, the rest of her, her body didn't go, What is wrong with you? Get up. <laughs> I don't feel that. Get up. Let's go. The whole body hurt. Oh, come on now. Our problem is whenever we see somebody in pain in the body of Christ, we go, hmm, wonder what they did wrong. Yeah, I knew that. I saw that coming. Wonder how else he'd have felt, Bob, if we had said, yeah, I saw that coming, Elsie. I told you not to do that. You did it anyway. It's your own fault. I'm sure glad I obeyed God because I didn't feel a thing. Oh, anybody with me this morning? Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. Hey, Amen. How many knows this is the body of Christ? We wonder why we don't discern anything because we don't discern the body of Christ. Amen. We see somebody in pain. Instead of feeling their pain, we judge them. God said, I, I'm tired of letting us play these religious games. If you want to play a religious game, and I'm, going to, I'm, I'm being honest, go to a lesser order. But those that God has pulled into this day, those that he, and how do you know? There's a quickening in your spirit you don't find nowhere else. There's something about the anointing of God with a priest-king order that does not resonate with anybody but the kings and the priest. And because of that, amen, what we're seeing and sensing and feeling is this. God says, I'm causing you to cohesive, come together. 
come together. I was going to read that one scripture and, uh, because I, wanted to, I want you to give you this word. 1 uh, Corinthians 12, 24. For our comely parts have no need. That word comely means beautiful. That's all it means. Your, the beautiful parts of your body doesn't need extra protection or covering. It's the uncomely part. But watch this. But God hath tempered the body together, having, be, having given more uh, abundant honor to that parts which lacked. And that hath tempered the body together is actually a Greek phrase. It says, I mingled you all together. I mingled you. For those of us that might think we're a step above, we're co-mingled. Because we're one body. We're one body. And there's not one of you, not one of you that we can do without. Amen. You say, well, I don't do anything but sit on. I don't care. I don't care what you do or don't do. We've got to have the whole body. Amen. Or we cannot function. Amen. Yes. Let's give the Lord a hand. God bless you. Thank you, Gary. Hallelujah. Got to be out of this room. They have a time limit on us. Have you enjoyed yourselves? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand. Praise God. Um, I believe we're going to reserve this. Uh, you all want to come back next year? Be all right? Well, I'm going to go there and reserve it for next year. Amen. And uh, we'll just uh, make a return trip here. Yes, sir. And uh, God was good to open this place up for us. Yes. And I think it's a good place for everybody to relax and have fun and get to know each other and get to fellowship. Uh, as I told you before, I'm wanting to make myself as available as I can to the body. To those of you that just want to, you know, if you have questions, if you um, have answers, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then I really want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 but uh, the ministry has this, I don't know, uh, in times past it's been sort of, you know, um, leave me alone until I'm in the service, but... Um, I, I really want to try to break that and, and make it to where uh, we are very accessible. Yes. And that we, uh, we ourselves need, have a lot of needs. And I have been ministered to as much as ministered unto yes. with the body of Christ. Sometimes we just got to have somebody pat us on our back and say, good job. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, but I, I appreciate so much everybody that's done uh, so much work to make this meeting possible. Yes. Um, Zach, with all the equipment um, and the running of the booth back in the back. Uh, Russ and Sabrina yes. for the work that they have done. Yes. Sabrina, I'm sure uh, she is... Uh, uh, answered so many calls and arranged so many room reservations and yes. then things get changed and all of that. So I really want to thank Sabrina yes. for what she's done during these meetings. Um, and, and for all of you, for your finances that you have given during these meetings, uh, it's been a real blessing to where we, uh, I think we're almost going to come out uh, uh, even. And uh, so that's a wonderful blessing yes. of the Lord. And I thank you because I know you're not giving because you have an abundance. You're giving because you know a need is there and, uh, and you're very short on funds yourself. So I, I, I thank you, every one of you for that. Um, but anyway, we'll do this again next year. Uh, the, I've already got uh, the dates. 
13th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th of October. In case you need to apply at work for your uh, vacation time. Uh, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. Uh, same format, uh, Thursday night and then uh, 10.30 and 7 o'clock. And then Sunday morning at 10.30. To everybody that has been able to tune in from uh, the internet, from Facebook and YouTube, uh, can't tell you how much you mean to us, how much we love you. As Gary said, just one body. Whether present or absent, one body. You know the word ecclesia, which was the word that they used in the early church because synagogue was the word for the Jewish meeting. And because they knew that they were no longer that, they started uh, identifying with ecclesia. And ecclesia, the interesting thing about that word, if you look it up and look at it, is that it is a membership of both those who were present at that time in earth, but that membership includes heaven, those that have passed on. And it's not just one time, but it, it, it encompassed everybody before it or after it. Amen. Ecclesia. We are together. Yes. And we are one body. Amen. Don't you love that? Yes. Yes. One body. Amen. And every part is needed, and we thank God for that. Um, all right. Let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord. We don't know what to say, oh God, in gratitude. Our, our hearts are so full. Thank you for this feast of ingathering, Lord. The abundance of your uh, supply, oh God. We thank you for everyone that's participated in these services. That has a song or a word. Thank you, Lord, for those that have prayed for the sick taken upon themselves to help those that are in such need. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that has done their job and their part in this wonderful body of Christ. And I'm asking you, Lord, to bless them for obeying the Lord. Asking you, God, that you'll prepare the way for us to be able to be here next year. Asking you, Lord, that you will have here next year those that you want to be there. Again, we're not marketing, Lord. We're just announcing a meeting. Yes. And we know that you're going to be the one to see who gets there and who yes. doesn't. So we thank you, Lord. And God, I'm asking you for safe travels today. Yes. God, I, I ask you to bless those that stayed over today. Yes. They could have left this morning yes. and headed back home. But they wanted to be in this final service. And I ask you to bless them and give them strength as they travel. And give them get safe travels, Lord. And Father, we just want to give you the glory and the honor for all things said and done. Unto Jesus, may the, in, may the gathering of the people be. And may all these things that have been spoken in these services, Lord, may they come to pass. In our lives, Lord. May the word that we have heard be manifested in our midst. In your holy name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Uh, if anybody can help, uh, if you're up to it, we need to break down all this equipment and we need to get it loaded up. So if you can stick around help, that's fine. If not, we'll handle it. Amen. God bless. Love you. <laughs>